We are now happy to be joined by the oh, a senior writer for Texas the, Football. Is he award winning? Can we call him award winning? Has he won? We'll have to ask I've him. Won an award before. What award was it, Mike Craven? I won a, head, a TTA headline award. Whoa! See, award winning DCTF award-winning senior writer. DCTF Live senior writer. Would you Mike like Craven. to hear the headline? I would. Why the why? Why the why, why the why? Was it about the YMCA? It was. It was the worst yeah! headline I had ever written. <laughs> Go me. Um, it was the, it was the worst headline ever written, and it won an award. So that I'm glad. I'm glad. You know, I did not know that. I am a. I am a. Here, here you go. If I if I may brag for a moment, I am a UIL Region One uh, headline writing champion. Wow. 2004. That is a hundred percent true and verifiable. Uh, so I'm glad to have another headline aficionado here. We're, sure. It's Mike Craven. If you couldn't <laughs> tell through the the that. Mess of an intro. Uh, senior writer for <laughs> TexasFootball.com. All right, Mike. Uh, a, a ton to talk to you about. We're going to start with the in the high school ranks. Um, the title games. The Texas mm. High School Football title mm. games. Back at AT&T Stadium. Boy, the UIL knows how to pick their spots with a press conference. It came down literally at the same time that our browse was fired. Um, your thoughts on, uh, on the title games moving back to AT&T Stadium? It's probably the right move from a financial standpoint and just for the good of the game. You know, the more people at these events and at these Texas high school football games, the better. There's definitely uh, the, the same atmosphere was not there at NRG that was at at and the last couple of years. Some of that may be the programs that were there, um, some of that's location. I think ideally you would like a rotation between Houston, San Antonio and Austin or uh, Houston, San Antonio. And Dallas, mm-hmm. uh, but Dallas, if you have to choose one, Dallas mm-hmm. is going to bring in the most fans, the most numbers, and uh, for that reason alone, I think it's a smart move by yeah. the UIL. Yeah, and I, I just think you, you saw it, whether you want to take it from a financial standpoint and you just want to take it from a from a headcount standpoint, you know, attendance was way down in, in Houston. There's a variety of different reasons to that. I don't think it's just because it was in Houston, but it was down last mm-hmm. year. And so, yeah, I think that I think when you have an opportunity to play in what is ultimately the, pre- <laughs> the premier – um, the premier football kind of mecca in te- in the state in the state and in the nation. I, I think you got to take that opportunity. That's kind of uh, where I am on it. All right. So you have been uh, hard at work uh, on the 2016 summer edition of Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Uh, you your your bylines all over this darn magazine, which will come out in late June, by the way. Uh, that wasn't necessarily for you, Mike, but rather for the listeners. Um, <laughs> Mike needs to know too. through uh, <laughs> through through kind of what you've done for and around the magazine. Are there any uh, high school teams uh, around the state that you're especially excited about? Uh, I think it's more excited about storylines that mm-hmm. will emerge because of the new districts and the new regions. Uh, mm-hmm. Katie's kind of been able to roll through their half of the bracket, you know, for the last few years, having Lake Travis and Westlake move over to region four, not only adds a state semifinal game that's capable of being as good as the state championship game, but it also raises the level from Converse Judson and Cibolo Steel. So now region four at the six, a level becomes very interesting to where it was kind of an afterthought uh, years previous. The same thing in region three and five, a uh, Cedar park moving over there, Crosby temple, a lot of just, you know, schools that are always really talented, that region becomes really good, and on, on the flip side, Region 4 and 5A mm-hmm. takes a drop without those LISD schools. Uh, stuff like Canadian, if they can move up and have the same sustained uh, success, if Fremont can finish this off uh, with Rashad Paul. So just different stories, lo- storylines like that around the state, I think, are already starting to mat- materialize before the season even begins. We're talking with Mike Craven, DCTF senior writer here on DCTF Live. Get involved in the conversation and hashtag DCTF Live. All right, Mike, I'm going to put you on the spot. We're going to kind of shift over to college football here for a second. And um, uh, obviously a lot a lot going on in the world of college football, but I want to take it back to the field for a moment. If you could only attend one college football game in 2016 in the state of Texas, which one would it be? Now, until two weeks ago, it was probably TCU and Baylor. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, that's probably that's probably true. Uh, now you know TCU Texas. I think will be a good barometer to see where Charlie Strong has this program. This seems to be kind of a make or break year to a lot of people for Texas. So after seeing them get drummed last year against TCU, I think it shows kind of where they are in the state. And then that Texas OU game as well. After you know OU is going to end the season as a Big Twelve favorite, got upset by Texas last year. That's a rivalry game. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think Baylor was going to enter the season as the first or second best team in the state. Um, them no longer kind of being in the football pit. You know, there's just so many other things to talk about with Baylor other than football. It seems kind of wrong to talk about football with Baylor mm-hmm. sometimes right now. 
but that really throws a wrench in the state and the hierarchy and, and things of that nature. Um, and, my, and for me, it may end up being a Houston game. I think Houston has a chance to, to make a mark mm-hmm. as big as anybody um, in this state, and they get a chance to prove it pretty early uh, with the game please against Oklahoma. Oklahoma. So, please, uh, please so, beat yeah. Oklahoma. Right, exactly. You know, so that that may be the game for me that I yeah. that I'd like to go see. I think Houston can do a lot of really good things this year. Yeah, I think that's the one that that has my my eye just because for Houston that game against <laughs> that game against Oklahoma right out of the gate at Energy Stadium, uh, right out of the gate. If they if they lose to o- if they lose to Oklahoma, then they're kind of in the same place that every non Power Five team is, right? Mm-hmm. Like they are, they're just kind of back in the middle, and they would you know they would need something crazy to happen for them to make the college football right. playoff. So there's really no downside to, for them. But if they win, if they win, then all of a sudden they're not just talk, they're not just in the mix for a college football playoff spot. They you could you could talk about how they are in a a really, really, really good position that if they run the table, mm-hmm. they're in. So yeah. uh, Houston, and I think Houston and, and, and Oklahoma would be my pick. All right, so we, we we would be remiss if we did not talk about the biggest story in the state we're so tired of talking about, so we'll let you talk about it for a minute. Uh, the Baylor situation. Uh, a, a ton coming out today. Devin DuVernay is apparently a free agent, which is amazing. <laughs> um, Art Prowse has put out a, a rather cryptic statement. Uh, overall, we haven't talked to you since all the news broke, but uh, what are your thoughts on on the Baylor situation? Uh, where do the Bears go from here? I mean, the first thing they need to do is stop digging. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, there, you always need to be on the right side of history. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't even know if you want to be on that side, you just need to see where it's going and jump on board at this point if you're Baylor. As good, you know, you need as much good press as possible. And holding these kids, like you said, holding them hostage is the the perfect way to describe it. These are guys that haven't even stepped foot on campus yet, for the most part. They haven't gone to a practice. They haven't gone to a class. This idea that they need to be bound by this this letter that was signed is is insane to me. When the college can get out of contracts and fire people and do things below board, all that kind of stuff, but then you want these kids to have to go letter by letter through the rule. It's just it's not right. And at some point, somebody at Baylor has to recognize that we need to do something that's going to get some positive publicity, Mm -hmm. something that makes people believe that it's not just about football and wins and bottom lines, because that's that's what everybody thinks. Yeah, and, uh, and and they've to the, do this makes that even worse. Yeah, and the the thing that I've I've made the point of is that it seems like Baylor's made about fifty bad decisions in a row. Mm-hmm. If if they could just make this one good decision, I, I think that that would start to stem the tide and start to to turn maybe the public perception of them back in their favor. All you have to announce is anybody who wants to be a Baylor football player and make this program right again can stay. Mm-hmm. Anybody who would like to have a fresh start other places, we don't blame them. They can go do that. I mean, it's really simple. Mm-hmm. A lot of this stuff that happens in college athletics, we make into these huge ordeals when it really just comes down to basic humanity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A college student should be able to transfer when they want to. And if you're a parent and you feel like Baylor University isn't the place you want your son to be right now as a football player, that makes absolute sense. And for the university to stand in the way of that, it's just one more way to show everybody else that you don't get it. Yep. And they have to they have to get it at some point. He is Mike Craven. He is a DCTF senior writer. You can follow him on Twitter at Craven Mike. Uh, Mike, appreciate your time, and uh, we'll do this again soon. Of course, Dylan. You have a good one, and uh, congratulations on getting that magazine out. Thank, I know that's, hey, uh, you that's too, a buddy. lot of stuff. Thank you. I, thank you. I slept real, real good last night. We'll talk to you later, buddy. <laughs> All right, later, man.